Welcome to Mission Gathering Christian Church, Charlotte. You are welcome here if you grew up in the church and have lost your faith. If you are in a moment of deconstruction or reconstruction, if scandals, politics, and hate have led you into doubt. We want you to know that you are more than what you produce. You are more than your past. Our time together is not about trying to fix you. Because child of God, you are not broken. Our time here is not about being productive. It's about being fully present here and now. So through our practice and attention, we can connect to the deepest part of ourselves. So that together we may more clearly see the divine within, outside of, and beyond ourselves. So if you are Asian, Latinx, Black, White, or Indigenous, if you are male or female, trans, or non-binary, if you are three days old, 30 years old, or 103 years old, if you've never stepped foot in a church, or if you are Buddhist, Roman Catholic, agnostic, or are a lifelong evangelical. If you are single, married, divorced, separated, or partnered. If you are straight, gay, lesbian, asexual, or bisexual. If you are a Republican, a Democrat, an Independent, a Socialist, or not registered to vote. If you have, or had, addictions, phobias, abortions, or a criminal record. If you own your home, rent, live with your parents, or are homeless. If you are fully abled, disabled, or a person of differing abilities, you are welcome to journey with us, to come and share our sacred meal at the table of grace, to join in labor with us in the creation of a better world, to become yourself truly and wholly welcome one and all. Hey friends, welcome back to Mission Gathering. It's seventh year in ministry. January, we celebrate our seventh year. January 2023 is our seventh year here in the heart of Charlotte, telling people that God is love and love is love. That all people are accepted regardless of race, gender, or sexuality. That God invites everyone to the table to experience the mystery of grace. So if you have been a part of this journey, I want to say thank you. And I want to ask maybe if you could continue to be a part of this journey through giving, through, through showing up, through volunteering. All of those things are important. But maybe you're just starting out this journey with us. I want you to know that when you give to Mission Gathering, this money goes to help people. This money goes to continue the work that we do here. To continue to seek justice, which is what love looks like in public. To continue to open our doors to community groups, to events, to all the different things that make this space a space filled with love. So for the gifts that some of you have already given and the gifts that some of you will give, I want to say thank you and offer this prayer of dedication. Gracious, loving God, we give you praise for seven years Seven years of faithfully standing by what you have shown us to believe in. Seven years of not making the popular decisions, but choosing to do what is right. Seven years of celebrating your love that comes out of the deepest place within us. So that we may celebrate each other, that we may be a community that builds your kingdom on this earth. We dedicate these gifts to that. That they would be gifts given to change the world. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. At that time, Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan River so that John would baptize him. John tried to stop him and said, I need to be baptized by you, yet you come to me. Jesus answered, Allow me to be baptized now. This is necessary to fulfill all righteousness. So John agreed to baptize Jesus. When Jesus was baptized, he immediately came up out of the water. Heaven was opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God coming down like a dove and resting on him. A voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I dearly love. I find happiness in him. Matthew chapter 3 verses 13 through 17. The Common English Bible Translation The Word of God for the People of God Thanks be to God So the other day I get a text from a friend saying Happy New Year. We all get those texts. 
But this friend was super excited about what 2023 was going to bring to, to our ministries, to our families, to just our nation and the world. They were so sure that this was going to be a year of amazing changes. But my response, my response wasn't to get excited with them. And I realized how rough of a response it was after I hit the sin button. Because I said, well, we'll see. How cynical. Is that, it was at that moment that I, I really realized that I've been experiencing burnout for quite a while. That I've been kind of running on empty and maybe even running on autopilot a little bit in my day-to-day -day relationships and in, in my life. Because I've been tired. Maybe you've been tired too. From these last few years, it's been a lot to ask. We were asked to stay home. We were asked to pivot again and again by bosses who wanted to help us make the best of things, but kind of seemed, maybe seemed dismissive in the process. We had years of protest and political action and, and declaring that, that black lives matter, declaring that, that we won't take the kind of violence that goes on in this country anymore. Nights of glories and, and nightmares. Nights of loneliness and loss. And that's not what we like to think about at New Year's, is it? Because this is a time where everybody's excited about the possibility of what the new calendar year can hold for them. About the possibility that change can really happen. And that the new year can bring that change about. But see, I think what stops most of us from ever really seeing that change is that little voice. And it's in me too. It's this voice of your own inner critic. My own inner critic. A voice of despair. A voice that can't be happy with anything. That was the only voice I could hear when my friend texted me. And maybe you felt like me this past New Year's Eve. As you counted down to the three, two, one, you were so tired. You were so worn out. You have been hope deferred for so long that you didn't even dare to dream that 2023 could be any better than 2021 or 2022 or 2020. Or maybe that's not you. Maybe like my friend, you're the ultimate optimist. You were jumping for joy and excited that the calendar had turned over and it was time for a new beginning. You see, I think we need both perspectives in our life. Our society has been experiencing a collective burnout. Everyone seems to be hitting the wall at the same time. Have you noticed that? And this collective burnout that we're experiencing hasn't been seen in several generations. Like most of our grandparents may, may not even understand the kind of burnout that's happening. And a part of why that's happened to me, a part of why I've been experiencing my own burnout, and maybe part of the reason that if you're experiencing burnout or you feel like the days just trudge on and nothing even matters, if you're like me, maybe it's because we don't spend enough time working on our inner life. We spend a lot of time working on all the life around us, but we never spend time working on that inner life. We're a society of action and autopilot, right? Where our worth seems to be measured by how much we produce for those with wealth and the results we get from our actions, right? Our worth is based on what we produce, like how we work, how hard we work, and what's produced from those actions. But there was this guy, his name was Thomas Merton, right? He was a monk here in America. And Merton taught us that action, that's like a stream, right? It's like a stream flowing down into the river, and back to the source. And that contemplation, also known as our inner life, also known as that interior work that we do, that spiritual action, that spiritual discipline, that spiritual development and formation, that contemplation, the inner life, is the spring. You see, we keep pouring all of our time and our energy into this stream of action, over and over and over again. We put all of ourselves out there. We go out. We show up. 
We do what we're supposed to do. In some manic sort of way, we try to show up and do good for everybody everywhere all the time, thinking that this will finally be the movement or the thing I need to be happy. This will finally be the time where my goals will be realized. This will finally be the time where the thing I've been striving towards is accomplished. And we go so hard, and we go so long, that eventually what once was a steady stream of love, compassion, belief, becomes dried up and parched earth. And that's when crisis hits us. I'm coming to see that if we really want to make 2023 a year of change and change for the positive, because all of life is change, this world and this universe is in constant motion, so change is the steady, change is the thing that's always happening. But if we want 2023 to be a year of change for the positive, then we have to to stop pouring everything into the stream. And we need to start spending more time at the spring so that our streams can once again flow. Flow with crystal clear blue waters. I like this quote from the Zen monk and teacher, Reverend Angel Kaido Williams, who said this, without interchange, there can be no outer change. Without collective change, no change matters. The lectionary passage this week is the story of Jesus' baptism found in the Gospel of Matthew. And I used to hear people when I was an undergrad or when I was in seminary argue about why Jesus needed to be baptized. John didn't seem to think Jesus needed to be baptized. Why would Jesus be coming to repent of anything? John was like, you should baptize me instead. But here's the thing. John and other people, kind of like us, they use language, right? We all use language. And the thing about language is it both constructs and builds and creates and forms a world around us, but it also constricts the world around us. While creating the reality we live in, it blocks us off, walls us off for the larger reality all around us. And the reality is, is that Jesus, Jesus knew that this baptism wasn't just about being saved from personal punishment so that one could skip happily into an afterlife to come. The repentance that those waters symbolized and embodied was all about an inner connection. It was about solidarity and a commitment to the actions of outer change. Not just for themselves, but for the collective, not just the personal. Jesus enters to be a part of what we are going to do, what we are going to go through, to be fully a part of the experience, to be fully with us. He's entering fully into the constructs and constrictions of the time in order to bring about two, true change and to show a pathway to a deeper inner reality that's the true reality outside and around all of us. You see, I want change this year. I need change this year. I think that you need change this year. Our world needs change this year. So over the next few weeks, I've got a plan. If you'll join me, if you'll hear me out, if we will try this together, before we begin the season of Lent and our preparation for the celebration of Easter, maybe we can enter into this time as a reconnection to that inner spring so that we'll be able to receive the lessons of Lent, so that we'll be able to perceive what God wants from us more, that we'll return to that inner spring, that deepest part of ourself that connects us connects us truly to the divine, the spring, the spark, the image of God within you. I think that that could help us get to a place and a space where we can see change. But in order to do that, in order to even get to that space where we can connect with our innermost being, we're going to have to confront 
our own internal narratives. And that's going to be tough. It might even be a little brutal. It might feel savage at times. So if you'll stick with me, I've got a list. I've got a list we're going to go down of those narratives that I think that we should confront together. If you want more help with this, there's a really good book by Andrew Lang called Unmasking Your Inner Critic. Super great. I recommend it. But the first one, I'm not good enough. You ever hear that in your inner critic? Second one, I am not lovable. Do you ever hear that within yourself? The next one, I'm not important. The next one, I am alone. I'm worthless. I'm not in control. I'm not free. I am my trauma. I don't know who I am. This list, you might identify with one or more of these, or maybe you don't identify with any of them. Or maybe you're just not ready to confront that inner narrative within yourself, these inner constrictions, these blockages that our inner critic spews out against us. But I think if we can spend these next few weeks doing the inner work to construct better internal narratives, to see ourselves as God sees us, that maybe those springs within ourselves, maybe those springs that, that have grown stagnant begin to bubble again with fresh, renewing waters that will pour out into mighty streams that justice can roll down, pour out into a year of personal and collective change. Mission Gathering and friends, Happy New Year, and may it be so. Amen.